Hello world, it's your boy Siddharth here, and today we're gonna to talk about artificial neural networks. So we're gonna start in three, two, one, let's get onto it. So how do they work? But before we understand how artificial neural network works, we need to understand how biological neurons or biological neural network works, which is integrated in your head. So I'm pretty sure you all, you all are aware of how a neuron works but if you don't I'm still gonna uh, I'm still gonna explain you how it works and what neuron is so we have studied this in high school let's just revise that all thing all together so a biological neuron has three simple things to do a receive the input signal from the five senses of your body which is skin tongue nose ears and your eyes second integrate those signals all together and to determine whether or not to pass on these signals to the cell body. So let me just show you through uh, annotation, what I'm trying to say is, so these dendrites, what you see right here, this is how a neuron in, takes in the signal. So if your skin gets touched to a hot, uh, say hot cup of coffee, this will take those uh, parameters, say temperature, position and EDC and we'll pass that on to the cell body which is this nucleus and when this signal value reaches to a certain threshold value it fires the neuron that means the signal gets fired I will explain you this in another detail in much more detail as we go along to the video just just stay with me so this value will uh, so the neuron will get fired and will send a signal to the other neurons to you know what you should take the, your hands off the cup or do any kind of task which is needed to be performed now the magical thing about these neurons is they they get connected with these synapses yes. now these synapses has very small gap between the two between the two neurons and these synapses play a very important role as in, in, in the in, uh, when it comes to communication of between the two neurons i will discuss because the synapses are the are the key uh, or you could say that this is the um i don't have words to explain this like this is the most important part of any neuron communication this is this is like the pioneer of all the communication. You can't communicate one neuron to the another without synapses. And this also plays a very crucial role in machine learning or any artificial neural network, which I will explain you in detail as we go along. So those are the three things what a neural network needs to do. A, receive those signals through dendrites, pass it on to the cell body or AKA nucleus or the cell body all itself, Passes those signals. If that signal reaches to a certain threshold, it sends those signal to the synapses, and that synapses then forward it to the next neuron, the spectrum neuron, to perform the task. These are the three simple steps to, you know, through which a neuron works, a biological neuron works. So let's let's look onto the example. So for example, you have a candle. You, can, you, of course, you will not touch the flame of that candle, but what if you do? You touch the flame of the candle accidentally, you will, ex you will instantly remove your hand off that candle's flame. You, do, you, do you know why that happens? It's because your, your, one of your senses, of the five senses, is your skin. The skin, gave your brain some inputs which is input signals which is temperature position of your hand and state and what state you are doing this is it eventually or accidentally these are so these are some inputs which is been sent to the neuron the cell body which i talked about previously now these three things when this temperature let's say the the, the, the normal temperature which a human can bear is uh, 30 degrees. But the flame is, is greater. 
So it's around 100 degrees Celsius. So this reached the certain threshold, right? The threshold was of 30 degrees Celsius, but it, it, but it crossed that threshold to 100 degrees Celsius. So it will send these temperature, position, and state to the other neurons to perform the action to your motor neurons to remove your hands off the flame. Because if you, of course, you know the result. If you keep your hand on the flame, you eventually would, your hand would burn. So this is how your biological head works. A, grabs the signal from your uh, five senses, any of those five senses, checks whether those data or that input signal reaches a certain amount of threshold. If it does, there's an action needs to be performed. So that how, that's how the whole biological neuron works. So before we move on, uh, okay. So I'm using with Zoom to record this video. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good tool for recording the videos. Anyway, so let's, now let's understand how artificial neural network works. Now this is the magical part. So an artificial neural network also contains three layers as the biological neuron did, which was input processing one, how it integrates all together and calculating the certain threshold and the output signal, right? It had three layers. In the same way, this neuron, artificial neural networks, also has three types of layers. One is the input layer, input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. So input layer takes in the input data, let's say an image, let's say which has a digit written upon, the, upon an image written, uh, something drawn onto it, let's say a nine written on it and a hand digit number called nine. This is the input. This input will be passed onto the hidden layer. This hidden layer, come on. <laughs> this hidden layer, and the hidden layer will calculate all those th certain thresholds. If this nine input value reaches to a certain threshold, something called 100%, if the predictability, if the calculation is like 100% yet, and this layer is 100% is uh, sure that it's a nine, then it will pass this prediction, which is yes, it's a nine, which is a binary input, of course, uh, which is going to be one, will pass onto the output and will say that, yo mama, it's nine. The digit on the picture is nine. That's how an artificial neural network works. So input layer takes in the image, hidden layer processes that image and calculates the certain threshold. If it reaches the certain threshold, it passes that uh, output through the output neuron and you, and you get the output as your result. So as I said, the third task, uh, which I said, uh, you know, the calculate, calculation of the certain threshold, that's, that's been performed in the output layer. It's performed in, in the output layer. Hidden layer just calculates the, the threshold, just the threshold. This compares those threshold. So let's say if the nine is like, if it comes with 100%, that yeah, it's a nine, which should be 100%, the threshold was 100%. And it came up with a value called, let's say not 100, let's say, um, okay, where, where is my, So let's, it, let's say it came up with the prediction called 80%, which is close to 100. Now this apple layer will compare this, will compare this, like how close these two numbers are, depending on that. In this case, we are just 20% close to, uh, we are just 20% far away from our actual prediction, which is not bad. So it will say that, yeah, this is a nine. So the comparison part has been done by the apple layer. The apple layer. Calculations is already done by the hidden layer. This 80% threshold has been calculated on the hidden layer. And the layer just takes in the input. So this is the whole story about how artificial neural network works. Now we are gonna deep more into it. All right, so stay with me. It's gonna be more interesting as we go. 
So mathematics of neural networks. Now, this is more interesting. Most of the people get confused, or I would say uh, get terrified after looking at the maths of neural network. So it's pretty easy. It's not, it's not a daunting stuff. It's just an activation function. The input I talked about, which is, of course, this, this whole thing needs to be a number number. It needs to be a number in the number format. Uh, I showed you those images just for the visualization, but computers talks in numbers. So let's say you're, you have an image called, uh, let's say you have an image of um, handwritten digit six, right? This, this image is 28 pixels by 28 pixels, 28 by 28. That means you have something around um, 764 something pixels. Just calculate it. It's something around 764 pixels. That means there are more than 700 pixels in this photo, right? But we need to convert this into a number. We need to convert this into a matrix. Now a matrix is some, looks something like this, right? You have few elements over here, A, B, C, and the thing goes all, all along. This is how things work. So you convert this image into a matrix number format. Once this matrix has been created, this is what our input is. This is our input is. Come on. <clears throat> this is what our input is. So we have our input, which is in a number form. Now we, talk, we need to talk about the weights. So weights, now, this, now here comes the most interesting part. Remember we talked about synapses? As I said, it, it's the most crucial thing in the communication between the two uh, neurons. It's, same, it's, it's just the same. Like, as I said, we have three layers in, in, an, uh, in an artificial neural network. Input, hidden, and output, right? So each layer, let's say an input layer. Input layer consists of, let's say, 10 neurons. Each layer of, of neural network consists of neurons. So input layer consists of, let's say, 10 neurons. So we have neuron number one, two, three, and two, whatever number you want. Let's say 100 or whatever the number is. So we represent that as N. We don't know the number. So to connect one neuron with the hidden layers neuron, we need something to connect. In this case, our synapse will be in, like just like in the biological neuron, we had synapses to con to connect both the neurons together. In this case, we had weights. We call these synapses as weights. We need to connect this neuron, this neuron, with the hidden layers neuron, which is H1, let's say for now, H1, using synapse. Now, how do we create that synapse? Is by creating some kind of parameter or number which will get multiplied with this input and will give you its final output. Make sense? Of course it does. So the weights, when we, when we do the first phase of training, when we first make a neural network, it just decides in random weights. Just throws in a random weight, whichever suits with the input. So let's say if the input matrix is like 28 by 28, as I said, the 28 by 28 matrix uh, times, Two times two. Let's say the weight value is two. So this is this is what a hidden layer does. This is the job of hidden layer. H one. That's what hidden layer does. And this calculation is being performed for every single neuron we have. Every single neuron. If you let's say if you if you have hundred neurons, this will this whole calculation will be performed with all the hundred neurons. Get it? So that means if this input times weight, this mathematical expression is not just with all these neurons all together. No, it's not with all the neurons all together. It's every single neuron we need to calculate the weights for. So we calculate so x1 times v, uh, w1, x2 times w2, and this all calculation is being performed by the hidden layer, this h1. This H1 calculates all this, this calculates the whole thing. 
And once it calculates those whole thing, it passes on to the output neuron. So now here comes the, uh, the interesting part. What if our weight is zero? What if our weights are zero? So if even if we have a correct input, let's say uh, seven, it will be a zero. So to tackle this problem, what we need is we need a bias, which will get updated according to the weights update. So as the weights update according to the training, the bias will update also, will get updated also. So if the weight is zero, so bias will, will add something, a number called one, maybe two, some random number which will eliminate this zero to get the correct input out. That's what output does. Oh, sorry, this, so this is whole thing. This whole thing is done by uh, the hidden layer, not just this, along with the bias. I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, so the bias, input times weight, add a bias, and activate this whole thing is is been performed by the hidden layer so this hidden layer does the whole thing so if the weight comes like let's say weight one is zero but input is seven you can't multiply these two numbers right it will of course give me a, a zero and i don't want the zero i need i need a value i need some results i need predictions so to tackle this problem what we do is add a bias let's see a number just a random number it could be one it could be a point one any random numbers to counter this problem so that we don't get a number called zero at the end. Like eventually we don't get a number zero. If the input, if the number, if the output needs to be a zero, then we of course need, need a zero, but that gets better and better that what number we should have as a bias, what number or parameter we should have as a weight value gets improved over the time of training, over the time while we train. So this is all what we have to, to do with training process. For now, just understand input gets multiplied by the weight. We add a bias if required, or even though we don't, it's not, so bias only doesn't get used only when, only when we have a zero as a weight value. No, it's not the case. So just to get more accurate, just to get even more accuracy, we add a bias. Now we have all the number. Let's say the number is something. We have come up with a good number. Now we need to activate this. Now this activation function is a very beautiful function. It's a very beautiful thing. What it does, whatever, the, so activation function carries a threshold. It carries a threshold and this is the activation function. You see over here, this is the activation function. So activation function checks if the threshold, let's say this number nine, this image of number nine, or let's say an um, uh, image of six, if this is six and the prediction of this whole equation over here was just uh, 60%. Okay, it, the prediction of this, oh, okay, uh, let's say it's uh, 70%. Okay, let's say 70%. Let's say the equation, the number, the, the output of this whole equation, input times rate at a bias was 70%. So the activation function will check the threshold, whether is it, is it less than the threshold or greater than the threshold. So if the threshold is like 80%, if the requirement of the, uh, of the prediction of fire, the neuron fire uh, requirement is, let's say 50%, and if it outraged that threshold, so this is the threshold, let's say. This is the threshold. Let's, let's just assume this is the threshold. If the threshold, which is 50%, and the prediction comes out to be 70, which is, of course, greater than the threshold, it will say, yo, man, fire the neuron. This is the correct output. This prediction is the correct output. You don't need to update the weights. You don't need to update the bias. This is correct. So it will say it's an image of a six. That's how this whole mathemat mathematical equation works. If we want to say it in words, how do we say that? Function under bracket sum of all the input layers, input neurons, sorry, input neurons times the weight neurons, a uh, weight synapses, and add a bias. 
and then we activate that. So sum, of course, this mathematical equation is, uh, is very easy to understand if you're a 10th grader or 12th grader, probably even if you're a 9th grader, is like sum of all these neurons we have in this layer. It's the sum of all these neurons times this weight. So if we say, like if you have x1, just to simplify this a little more, so x1 times, times uh, w1, we need to add these two. So x2 times w2. Let's say we get an answer of two plus four plus four, so the answer will be eight. I'm just, I'm just simplifying this. It's not the actual uh, calculation what a computer does, it's just for your understanding. So two plus four equals, uh, sorry, six, not eight, six. And it does this for every single neuron. It calculates every single neuron till the n, you know, the n thing, nth term. If it's still 100, it will add up all those neurons all together. It will come up with a sort of output. It will add all the biases uh, related to all these neurons, which will be, of course, let's say 10, so 10 times 10, whatever the number is. It will get multiplied with that. Oh, sorry, add it to that, and you will get the final result, which will be the prediction. This whole thing will be the prediction of all the neurons which analyze that number six image. So this input layer, as I said before, as I said previously, the number six image is being passed on to the input layer. That means it's been passed on to the whole neurons in the input layer. And then what it does, it calculates all those numbers which was, which was extracted through this input layers and the weight multiplication. So dot product, long story short, a dot product. That's what we call a dot product. Input times weight, you get a dot product. We add that to the bias to get even more, even better accurate, uh, even better prediction, and we activate that if that uh, if that amount reaches to a certain threshold, we fire the neuron and say this is the output. Ooh, enough with the math, man. Let's get even deeper with the tutorial now. Let's get even further. So now we have the activation function. So I don't have to explain this a lot because I already explained this in the last slide. And the activation function, okay, so as, so I forgot to tell you one thing. The, whatever the output you get after that equation, which was sum of all the inputs times weight and bias, let me just write this. Whatever the number is, Let's say it came up with a number of 70. I'm just giving you a uh, visualization. Computers don't do this, do, don't uh, calculate in this way. Of course, they have some other format. They come up with the 70, uh, 17, uh, number 70. Of course, they come up with the matrices or something. But for your visualization, I'm just saying if it came up with a number called 70. Now, this 70 needs to be the form of probability because computer understands only two language, uh, two, uh, two signals, zero or one, either zero or one. Zero means off, one means on. So if the 70 is the number, it will, the activation function will create or will convert that number in the form of zero to one, a number between zero to one. So this number will get created somewhere in the graph of let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, maybe 0.2, or maybe point. 3.7 something, 0.3. If, if, the, if, if, if it is a 0.3 value, that means the prediction is 30%. If it is 0.4, let's say 0.1, that means it's 10% accurate. So this is the accuracy point. And if this, whatever the prediction is, the probability, whatever the number of probability is, if it, again, if it reaches a certain threshold, it fires the whole neuron. So that's what activation function is. So as it says, now we have the outputs from the hidden layer, but we need to convert this in the form of probability of either one or zero. That's what it does. That's all an activation function does. So it converts the number 
from the hidden layer, the output from the hidden layer in the form of probability, which is a number between zero to one or either zero or one. Uh, usually it's between, it's a number between zero to one, uh, but you know, exceptions can still occur. So that was about activation function. And here is my favorite part. I, I was like dying to talk about this, is the cost function. As, and I was, I was talking about some thresholds, right? Of course, I've been talking about this whole time right now. So this is what it is. Let's say your output needs to be 100%. Okay, this is your threshold. This is your threshold. Now listen to me very carefully. And the predicted output was after the activation function and all, as it says, okay, now we have a prediction, but let's say if the prediction is wrong, how are we tell our computer to perform better? That's where error or cost function comes into play. It makes your neural network better and better while training. So I'm gonna tell you about this. Okay, I'm just gonna, uh, operation is wrong, how I suppose tell, perform better, where, that's where the, I'm just gonna highlight this thing, okay. So, as in the image says, if you have a threshold of, let's say, 100, or let's say 100, I'm just gonna put in something, 100, you come up with a prediction called 70, right? So what is the difference? Okay, this is, this is the wrong way. Yeah, the, so the, you have the threshold over here. And let's say you came up with a prediction of 70. Now what's the difference between the two variables, x and y? The difference between is only 30, right? It's 30%. So this is what a cost function does. It will, of course, it will be a square of these two variables. So a minus b, the whole square. So whatever the number comes up with this will be your improvement parameter. So of course, whatever the number comes with this, which is, you know, you get it. Uh, if I just calculate this, but using my phone over here, let's just calculate this. I'm not, a, I'm not a math geek. I just know how the formulas works. Okay, so we have 100, minus 70 uh, times square, right? So we have this is times the square, which is 900. Okay, then that's quite a hard function. So we have 900 as an, as an answer of this whole equation. Of course, this is not the number it's gonna put in, or maybe it could. So 900 is the answer of this whole equation. So this, will be your next weight parameter. This will be set as the weight value while the next training phase. So first training phase, it, it was just figure, figuring out with the experimental values of the weights and biases to get the output uh, in, in front of your eyes. Now, after the training and applying these cost functions and error functions, now it's able to detect what kind of value it should put in. It's, 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 it's training over time and, and it's able to understand what kind of output, or sorry, what kind of value needs to be put in the place of weight value and biases value. So let's say the value is 900 and previous value of weight was 600, or maybe even low, let's say 300. 300 was the previous weight value. So this will get updated with this one, 900. And the, now the second, the, now the third time when it gets trained, so when the third time is going to get trained, it will train on 900. Uh, the rate value, uh, the rate parameter will be 900 and the whole training phase will take over to the new updated rate value. That's what a cost function does. It comes up with the error difference between the two variables. Of course, this is going to be in another format. It's just a visualization how these, this whole function, this whole algebraic equation works. I'm not talking, I'm not saying this is the exact, this is how exactly the numbers are. Don't focus on the numbers, focus how this whole equation works, right? So that's the difference. And it will keep on updating this until it comes up with the perfect or very less, you know, the most minimum value of uh, difference.
So to to reduce to come up with the best rate value, it needs to be around like 98% or maybe even 90, 98%. So difference will be only of two. So at that point, the neural network knows that it has performed well in his training phase. So this was all about the cost functions and the error functions. Oh man, that was a lot of math. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's cool. Coding the neural networks and understanding the architecture. Now we need to code our architecture, our neural networks. So let's get onto our Jupyter Notebook. If you don't have a Jupyter Notebook, please install that. I also have a video in my YouTube channel that how do you do that, but it's 2020. Uh, things have been changed a little, but installations still remains the same. You could go, uh, you know, uh, browse through my YouTube channel and come up with that video. But, uh, sorry, I go through that video, but it's up to you, it's your choice. So, uh, let me start up my Jupyter Notebook. So yeah, so I've already coded it. So I'm just gonna rename this sigmoid. So yeah, here is our code. It is, it is very simple and very, very small code. It's a very small code and it's, it's easy to understand. You just need to bear with me. Just bear with me, stay with me, and I'll, I'll, get, you, uh, I'll get you all this thing in your head quite quickly. Quite quickly. So first of all, we need we need something. We need our dependencies so that we could code easily, right? So we are importing NumPy, a library to do mathematical equations easily on computers, at least scientific uh, scientific calculations. To do any kind of scientific calculation in Python language, you need a library called NumPy. So we are doing a scientific calculation. So we are using NumPy for our dependency. Now, as I talked about the, the um, activation function, you're gonna use sigmoid. So I'm just gonna name the sigmoid activation function. Activation function. And it's just very simple. It takes, the, it takes in the input and the derivative. If the derivative is true, it will return the, the x times the one minus the input. Whatever the, uh, I won't say input, the, so over here, the x is the output of all that equation, input times weight at a bias, whatever the number was, that's what x is. So if the derivative of that function is true, it will do this equation, it will perform this equation, and, and if it's not, then it will perform this set of equation. So this is what sigmoid activation function is. You don't need to go much into this detail. You get this kind of code anywhere. And this whole code is in the uh, is on the GitHub. I'll provide the link to this code in the description. So, but we need, uh, now we need an, an, a data set. As I said, we need a data set to train on, train this neural networks on, right? We need a data set. And that's how we get, about, we get to know about the thresholds we need. So X, so np.array, we are creating an array of certain numbers. There's zero, zero, it's just a pattern. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, and one, one, one. So this is the input. This is the output we expect. The pattern what we need is zero, zero, one, one. That's what our output is. So we have two variables now. X, defining all whole input data set. Y, defining our output data set. This will be a threshold, by the way. Through, through this, it will be able to decide a threshold. Uh, yeah. This is the threshold. Okay. Now we transpose this into the pattern because, of course, we, because, uh, of course, we have this in a column, right? We don't have a column of four. Oh, sorry. We don't have a row with four elements. If we have a matrix of three by four. Which, is, which has three rows and four columns. So we need to convert this whole thing with, we need to convert this, uh, this uh, pattern, the 0011 pattern into a column form so that it could come up with the output and also could 
uh, also will be able to uh, decide this at the threshold. It will be easier for it. So for that, what we do is np.ra, we pass in the pattern, dot t. Now t over here stands for transpose. I'm just going to type this over here so that it won't be a difficulty for you all guys. Transpose. So what transpose means, of course, it converts rows into columns. That's what transpose does. So I just print, you just print the Y, just check if this is a correct uh, pattern. Of course this is. np.random.seed1. To get the same output every time we run the script so that we don't get a different output we, when we run. It is not necessary, but it's just a good practice. It's up to you. Now, as I said about the weights, and I said these weights are being decided randomly by the computer. So that's how we do. So snap number, of course, zero. Uh, computer starts counting from zero till the end number. So snap zero means the first neuron in the layer of the, between the two, the first weight value. I named it as snap, snap sin zero. Two, two times np.random.random .random minus one. So it just comes up with the mean value of that. So two is because we have two values in it. It comes up with a mean value, and that's what the weight value is. And and the np dot random, the, whatever the number the two is going to get multiplied is totally random. It's going to generate it. It's going to be generated from this uh, mathematical library called NumPy. So it's going to generate some random number. It will do the whole mathematical equation and come up with a certain parameter of this snap. <coughs> now it comes to training part. This is the training phase. This is the training phase. So for every single element in the range of 10,000, I guess that's 10,000, that's what I wrote, yeah. So you need to iterate a 10,000 times. So it's the whole, this whole code will work for 10,000 times. That's what for loop does. Iterating over a single element over and over again, over a bunch of elements over and over again. So first of all, what we do is, so our input layer is the X. So whatever, this is the input data set we had. We just created the set of arrays and matrices. That's what we're putting in into our layer one. So this is our input layer's first input. So X is the input and nonlinear, of course. I need to, and this is the, now this is the main thing. As I talked about earlier, uh, the activation function, input times weight. So that's a dot product. So np dot dot, times the input we have and the synapse, the weight value we, uh, where, where did it go? The weight value we just created. So that's what the, the synapse zero is. I didn't add it any biases because this is not a very, this is not a very complicated, uh, I would say it's not a complicated neural network. It's just one single layer uh, neural network. As you see, it's just one input layer, one weight value, and just one, uh, yeah, just one output layer. It's just one there neural network. You don't need biases. You need biases when, when there are a lot of, you know, a lot of neural uh, in, uh, input, uh, input layers, uh, sorry, input neurons, and you have a lot of hidden layers. When you have a lot of hidden layers, at that point of time, it's, it makes sense to use biases. But for now, we are just making a single layer neural network. So, as I talked about the cost function before, now this is, what it is. So why is the actual output? See, we had this data set, right? We, I, as I told you, this is the threshold. So why is the actual threshold over here? And minus the L1. So whatever the prediction comes out from this hidden layer will get subtracted with the threshold or with the, the, with the actual output data set. And that will be the error rate. That, that's the difference between the two. And that error rate will be pass on to the delta, which is again the cost function. This was the error calculation. This is the cost function. Of course, this is again the activation function. And of course, we are going to multiply this error value with this activation function L along with this equation. We're gonna pass on this whole equation L1, which is the hidden layer, through this activation function and we'll update those weights. So once you get this value, I, I, this, is, this is very simple. This is very simple and I hope you're, you all are understanding this. So we get this error rate. So let's say error is two, we put in two over here and, and whatever, the, uh, whatever the prediction was of uh, using this equation, whatever the prediction came to us, 
we put in over here and we pass, pass on that whole prediction through an activation function again, just to update our thresholds. Now the thresholds have been updated. We have the whole cost function. Now we need to update our weights, as I said before. So CN1 plus NP dot, dot product, of course, is going to uh, take out a dot product. The L0, which is the X, which was, the, which was our input, the input layer will get transposed. So it was in the form of row, it will get converted into the columns, will, and we'll take, uh, we'll multiply that with the L1 delta. That means, uh, as I said, it was, um, it's more of like, uh, I would say, yeah. So updates the weights. So of course, as we have our X, which is input, now L delta, is the actual cost function value. Yeah, I lost the word for a moment. So that's what the cost function value is. To now, when we multiply both of those, we'll get our actual, our updated weight. So once we get the updated weight, we get our output. We get our better output. So let's run this whole thing and let's see what this is the output we get. So here's our NumPy. We define our uh, sigmoid activation function. We have our input, we have our threshold, which is the output, the, uh, the expectation we need. We print those outputs, random seed, just to get every single time the same output. Uh, we have a weight value, now we train. Voila, this is the prediction, as I said. If you look at this clearly, it's 0 0.009. That's close to zero. It's not complete zero, it's close to zero. And if I talk about 0 0.9935, it's close to one, it's not exactly one. As I said previously, it's, it's, it's going to be a number between zero or one. Not completely zero, not completely one, but exception still lies. It, could, it still occurs. So yeah, it has detected that part, pattern in a very nice way. So this was a very simple, bare bone uh, neural network. It wasn't even advanced. Probably in the next video, I will code an advanced neural network if it interests you. And of course I will, if this is interesting, I will. And of course I will, uh, I will link a, uh, the GitHub repository in the description so that you could download this uh, notebook and run on your computer and see if it's working or not. So yeah, that was all. Thank you for watching. Please share this video if you liked it. Please hit the like button if you like this video again. And yeah, have a good day. Stay safe and goodbye. Sarah Chaudhary signing out.